everyone, it's Desiree, and welcome back. We've got another Hero Arts. This is a September 2017 monthly kit, and this is part one. So the first card. I'm using the Gina K White Pigment Ink, which I have to say is my favorite uh, when it comes to the white pigments. And I'm using the vines, and I'm kind of creating a pattern paper in the background with these vines. It almost looks like lace. I am going to heat set that because it is a pigment ink. This kit was very challenging for me. So it's, a, it's all layers of pumpkins and sunflowers and that's kind of not my style. But you can see I'm taking the Hero Art ink, I'm putting it onto the stamp, I'm spraying it off camera and I'm doing the layers. What I forgot is the properties of the Hero Arts ink. So this kind of is giving a different effect. Um, didn't realize till towards the end of the, the card um, why it was doing what it was doing, but I still think it, it looks kind of different, um, muted and, and so forth. So I did heat set those. I'm now working on the tops of the pumpkins for this card and I'm going to die cut them out. And I'm also going to die cut the stems on top of the pumpkins as well. So you can kind of see the design but not. Um, I did heat set those because um, again there was a lot of water with all of the stamping I was doing. So I'm grabbing my panel and now I'm just play, playing around with the placement grabbing my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle die to cut out that panel that the two pumpkins and the sentiment will be set on. Still playing around, not quite sure. So then I pull in a white strip. I'm actually using the cardstock that came from the kit. Uh, it's like a, a off-white with like a fleck that goes through it. It's really pretty actually. So I'm putting my pumpkins in place, sorry about that, putting them in place so that I can see where I'm going to put the sentiment, I am grateful. I'm using my Versamark ink and I have this beautiful eggplant embossing powder um, from Recollections. You can get it at your local Michaels and it, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so orange and purple, they complement each other and I figured it would pull in something. So now I'm just adhering the pieces. So for the first pumpkin, I've used my uh, glitter art glue, no glitter. Um, and for the second one, I'm going to use foam squares just to give it some dimension. And then placing down the stems. I'm going to flip this card base over, fold over the sides of the cardstock the sentiment and pumpkins are resting on. I'm going to use my adhesive to set that down in place, put adhesive along the back, and apply it to my top folding four and a quarter by five and a half card base. The card bases are Nina Solar White. Um, I use the 80 pound uh, when it comes to card bases. I now grabbed my Nouveau Drops, and I'm just putting in some splotches. I like to call them splotches all around. That's card number one. Card number two, I actually pulled in a wooden block stamp from my stash. As you can see, I have no idea where I got this, but it's a beautiful leaf pattern. Um, so I'm just using my Versamark ink all over this panel. I'm then going to use clear embossing powder and heat set it. And you can see the leaves really shine through. It actually makes the craft paper a little darker underneath, which I think is really cool. I'm going to use some of the vellum that comes in the kit as well, and I'm going to cut out three of those pumpkins, and then I'm going to do the same with the smaller one, except this time I think, yeah, uh, die cut four. And again, just playing around with the placement. I did this a lot when it came to this card. So we're going to watercolor. So I grabbed two pieces of Canson XL watercolor paper, uh, put water down on them. So this is going to be a wet on wet technique. I sprayed my Gonzai 
watercolors that I'm using there and I chose three colors of green and three colors from yellow to a deep orange. So I'm putting the base colors down of the lighter of the three and then I'm going to move on to the middle color and then eventually into the darker. So I'm letting the watercolors do their magic. I'm just scribbling it in. There's no rhyme or reason. I just want the colors to blend on their own. In some cases, I was specific to where I was putting this color, but you can see how it turned out. It came out really cool. So now I'm going to grab all those dies for the pumpkins, two different sizes and the two different leaves, and I'm going to die cut just a, a random number. I wasn't quite sure how many I was going to use for this card, so I figured let's just go to town between the stems and the leaves. Um, with the pumpkins, it was set based off of the vellum that I cut out. So you can see I've got some interesting texture going on there. I'm going to use, I believe the shade was caramel from the kit, and I'm just using the last layer of the stamp on top just to give it some more dimension for the pumpkin, just to see the, the, the shadows, so to speak. And then I'm using, I pulled a green from my stash of the Hero Arts for the leaves as well, and I also used the caramel there as well. So now again, I'm, I'm putting, playing around with placement and the layering and so forth. As I said, this kit was really challenging for me um, because of the, it's not that I don't like fall. I love fall, uh, more Halloween, um, but this one was, was really tough. So you can see that I'm adhering the vellum. I'm using some small glue dots to adhere the vellum. I know people say, oh, you're going to see the glue dot, uh, not the way that I made sure everything was positioned. Um, and I even found when I did use that, you really couldn't see it. Um, maybe because of the shade of the vellum, I wasn't quite sure. So here we're going to start adhering the pieces. It's going to be both a combination of my liquid glue, uh, my art glitter glue, and also some foam squares when it comes to the leaves. And that's the final placement. So now we're going to adhere this again onto a top folding card base. I'm okay with the pumpkins coming off of the edge of the craft. I think that kind of makes it look unique, different, gives it more texture. You can see I took the sentiments hello and sunshine and I straightened them out because a lot of these sentiments did have a basic curve to them. Straightened them out and I'm going to use my Versamark ink and put that on my black cardstock. You can tell I fixed my, my, my powder tool in case some of you remember from the last one where I was punching it. Obviously it's working now. And this time for my embossing powder, I'm using liquid platinum. I am absolutely in love with my liquid platinum from Ranger. So I'm just trimming this up with my scissors. I'm going to fishtail the one end of this banner and I'm going to use the glue dots again to adhere it. So I'm going to put one at one end and I'm going to put one about three quarters of the way down. So I'm going to secure the one end and then you can see I'm kind of bending up the cardstock just a little bit. Again, just to give it some texture, don't need foam tape, just creates a wiggle. So now I'm going to set some dots of glue all around my pumpkins and I'm going to put sequins and that's card number two so card number three this is my favorite we are going to stamp the pumpkins starting in gray now you'll see through these videos too again it's it's all layering so there's a lot of times where i will cut out a lot of layering you know, once you see it once you kind of get the hang of it um so you will start seeing some things being cut out so i created a mask to cover the first pumpkin that i stamped over and you can see why with the second one that i created i wanted the one um to be pushed back 
in between these two. So we start out with the gray. Now I'm pulling out those vines. And the inks that I'm using are from Stampin' Up. They're dye inks. I am absolutely in love with their dye inks. Um, I love Hero Arts. I have to get used to them. And their cubes were very juicy. So I wasn't able to get solid effects. And you'll see as we go through these what I'm what I'm saying. So the first color that I used was a slate gray. The second one is called basic gray, which is the one that I'm using here now for the vines and the second layer of the pumpkin. And then the last one eventually is going to be their archival black. So you can see I'm doing a lot of second generation stamping, you know, putting it down on the pad, um, then putting it down onto the pad that I'm working on um, just to get the different effects. I love this look. Pumpkins in black and white. So now we're going to work on the next element. So now we're going to work on the sunflower. So you can see I'm going to do the sunflower in colors. And again, these are Stampin' Up! inks. Again, I really love these inks. They give such a solid impression. It, it's amazing. And I will list all of the colors that I used down below. But you can see how well this sunflower really comes up. There's three layers for the flower, and then there's two separate layers for the inside. And you can even use the inside as a flower on its own, depending upon the colors that you use. I'm using two shades of the green for the stem and the leaves for the sunflower, and I'm going to die cut them out carefully. Things get temperamental sometimes. So I'm going to grab that panel again, and I'm going to use my wonky, or I'm sorry, nope, I am using my Lawn Fawn stitched rectangle. And we're going to set the sunflower and the stems in place. So I'm going to be applying my glue. And you can see I'm not covering the whole thing. Because um, when I put this down, I, I kind of go to bend. There was some footage that I was losing through here, but I bent up the tips of the leaves just to give it some more texture. Sunflower is up on some foam squares. And now that sits in the bed of the black and white pumpkins. I'm grabbing two of the sentiments. One is Sending You, and the other one is Sunshine. So we're going to stamp those and emboss on black cardstock. So using my Versamark ink once again, and then I'm also going to pull in my white embossing powder. Uh, get mine from Recollections, Michaels. And I think it works really, really well. Going to heat set that in place, and then I'm going to use my trimmer here just to trim this down just a little bit. And I figured, okay, we'll, we'll fishtail, and you can see we make a drastic change when it comes to that. I really did not. My original thought was to take that sentiment and put it across the base of the sunflower. I did not want to lose all of that texture and the look that I had from those pumpkins. So we just cut it in half like we do our stamps. We cut them in half and we're going to reset them. So the top one, we just put that up on foam tape, keeping the fishtail to the left-hand side. I removed the fishtail completely on the sunshine, but left a little bit, and now I'm adding three dots, just for a thought. So we're going to put that up onto our four and a quarter and five and a half card base. And yes, the had to fix that. Sorry about that. I'm going to trim off that little end. And I'm using a black card base for this. We're thinking about some accents for this. Still on the iridescent sequins, yes, but I love them. So I figured I just wanted to put sequins in the center of the sunflower. So I'm using my glue and my wax pencil to pick them up 
and set them in place. Not too many. Again, it is an odd number. We don't go even, um, but it just gives a little bit of glimmer. When you turn it, there's my phone, just in case you wanted to see that. Sorry about that. That was card number three. So for card number four, you can see I'm showing you how I'm going to set up in my, that's a squishy pad, um, in my Sizzix Big Shine. So if any of you, and I'm sure you all have seen the recent Jennifer McGuire video, she did an impressed um, die embossing into her card bases, and that's what I'm doing here. So I'm using the large sunflower and, you, and I'm showing you because I can't put my big shot up on the table. I'm sure I'm going to do this multiple times by moving that. So by putting the the first plate down, the squishy pad down, your card stock, and then the die on top, you can get that impression. And now I'm going to stamp inside of those areas. So this was a little tricky. So what I did was I took the die, I set that in place, into the creases that's already in the card so that I could figure out where I was going to stamp. I'm not using the solid, the first stamp layer. I'm actually, I went right to the second layer and then I'm pulling in the third. So I'm only using two of the colors. Um, I didn't want the solid. I wanted it to be white and airy. If that makes sense, I figured the impression of the dye would give the sense of the flower. So now I'm going to pull in the center of the flowers and I'm using the Karma. I am using one of the Hero Arts, um, doing a second generation stamping on it. And, and it, it didn't look right to me, but you know what? You keep on going. We don't stop. We never throw a card away. And I think you can see why it just wasn't looking right. It kind of that other color went bled into it. So I'm actually using my Lawn Porn Stitch Rectangle die once again, and you can see I'm now going to come in with a darker color, one of the Stampin' Up! colors, um, just to give it a little bit more definition. Using the raffia that came with the kit, so I'm going to wrap this around uh, towards the bottom. And we're going to set that in place. And I think this is this is an area where, yeah, totally forgot. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, this would look cute too. So I real quick grabbed the little bee. Um, I'm using one of the yellow colors from the sunflowers that I use. And then I'm going to use the black for the outline to go right over it. You don't have to be precise with that. That's the beauty of the layering stamps. Um, they're not supposed to look perfect. So I was able just to real quick throw those little guys in there. I'm stamping my, excuse me, stamping my sentiment. I am grateful. I'm using gold embossing powder. We're going to heat set that. And then I pulled out one of my dies from my stash. It's a Sizzix uh, die. Cut that out. I'm putting foam tape to the top and the bottom so that that will actually straddle over the raffia tape. Um, that I have on this card. That's going to sit there prominently. I put this on some fun foam and then I'm going to adhere it to a chocolate. This is a uh, chocolate chip cardstock from Stampin' Up! And now I grabbed my Nouveau Drops. I believe this is the Lemoncello from one of the Jewel Drops and just putting drops and blotches all over the place. Um, these drops are really great. And then I'm going to add some bigger blotches right in the center. That's card number four. Card number five, always try to have a shaker card, and this is it. So we've got the circle in place. I'm going to secure that with some micro tape just to make sure it doesn't move, because I really want this to be centered in a certain spot. And now we're going to stamp. You can see I've put a mark on my stamp block. Um, and the reason 
why I did that is because I always want to know where that one section was with the stamp because you can see now that I have that opening I'm just going to take this stamp and I'm just going to continuously stamp around that opening um, I'm not worried about the inside of course that's why I pulled out my scratch pad and now I'm just going to keep on layering so it's it's going to create this huge sunflower going around so now I'm picking up the darker color and I'm in the second layer of the stamp and again I'm just going around I'm, I'm not worried about if I'm matching up to the stamp sometimes I do a lot of times I don't it's just kind of flowing into itself so I keep going around and just filling that in if I've had a couple people email me and ask me about this pad that I'm working on I literally go to an AC Moore's or Michael's and get one of those huge newsprint pads I think they're like 24 by 36 and I actually cut it in half and then one of the halves I cut in half again so I get three pieces out of it so it's cheap I just use an exacto knife to cut it so sorry about that so now I'm sitting here and I'm adding the stem doing the two layers there and I think it looks really cool um, it's a big sunflower I'm now taking these inks because these inks will mix with water yeah so I'm just putting them onto a clear block and I'm just going to do a little bit of watercoloring on this small Canson XL watercolor sheet um, just to create the background behind the opening so I'm again wetting it first and just dropping in some colors I am just using two different shades um, they will create their own blend once they're left alone to dry and you can see it kind of looks different so now we're going to build our shaker. So I'm going to put my liquid glue around the opening, place down my acetate. I like to keep the tissue paper on there and tries to make me stop get fingerprints all over it. It doesn't work, but it makes me feel good. I'm going to trim this panel down just a little bit and then just make sure that it is big enough for the circle. I'm going to grab my Bone tape and start the building there I don't show this part um, but that's how I usually form my strips I just grab a huge chunk of it fold it in half um, then if I you know cut it in half and pull it apart so now we're gonna put the bits in so these sequins were actually from a Stampin' Up uh, paper pumpkin kit that I received the colors were just perfect so had lots of extras so grabbing those and then grabbed in some seed beads and some bugle beads because I like to add that into my shaker cards add my backing to it and there's the big sunflower <clears throat> I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back where we water colored and then we're just gonna place that down again on the four and a quarter and five and a half top folding card base I'm then using uh, the chocolate chip marker and I'm just from Stampin' Up and I'm just putting stitch lines around the border of it I'm using the sentiment autumn greetings going to stamp that on black cardstock and we're going to emboss with gold they just seem to be the colors you know black cardstock for the sentiment <laughs> gold embossing powder there was a running theme used my trimmer again to cut this piece down and we kept on cutting this piece down um, you can see you know it was really covering up the the stems and the leaves so we just tried to trim it as best as we could um, still trying to take off more there before I set her down finally so set that in place actually grabbed one of the charms that came in the kit came with uh, three sunflowers and two leaves so the glue that I was using is beacon three and one it's the best way to describe it it's a cold hot glue it's not a hot glue but it's it's got the same properties except it's cold so I didn't get to burn my fingers um, and it's great it adheres everything grabbed my 
old stickles there in gold and I'm just placing those around into the sunflower in sets of three. And that's card number five. I hope everybody enjoyed the first five cards. Please stay tuned for part two. If you haven't already hit that like button, please do so. Also, hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in touch and see more as we create. All the products that I used outside of the kit will be listed below in the description box. Please check out my blog. There are some other things that I get myself involved in that are shown there and talked about. And by all means, everybody, please be creative. Take care.